okay? What can you hear? Oh, well now it's off. So you need don't plug it in? Sounds okay now? Testing, one, two, three, four. You can hear? All right, they say they can hear now. Okay, good, 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 good. Sorry about that. We were trying a new mic, but obviously that didn't work out, so we're just gonna wing it from here on out. My name is Larry Stein. I work for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service going on 40 years, been a long time. And uh, I am Associate Department Head for Extension Horticulture. We have about 23 specialists and program specialists that work across the state. In addition, we have 24 county horticulturists that work across the state. So we've started doing these Facebook Live events to give you information on what's happening at certain times of the year, certain things that you need to be pay, paying attention to. And all, this is all to highlight Aggie, hortic Aggie horticulture. We have a lot of information on Aggie horticulture. So we hope you'll check us out there and watch other videos that we've posted in the past. Now, those of you that know me know that I'm kind of passionate about pecans. And I have a lot of friends that tell me, well, I would never plant a pecan tree. I would never have a pecan tree in my backyard. Well, you know, and so they doubt the virtues of oak trees. And so then I think about oak trees and what oak trees do. They drop leaves. Uh, they drop catkins when they bloom. They also drop acorns. And I'm not quite that hungry enough. I'm not going to start eating so, you know, you could plant a pecan. Years ago, pecans were thought to be prized. You think about all the courthouses around Texas, realize there's 254 counties in Texas. We have 250 offices in Texas. And even though cotton is king in Texas, pecans have a presence in almost every county in the state. And so pecans are valuable. People used to valuable for the nuts. And so we really like to push pecans. We think it's a good crop to grow, especially in this day and age. Now this is summer, this is August, extremely hot, a lot of stress on the trees. And the biggest complaint we're getting right now is pecans are dropping off the tree. Pecans are dropping off the tree. And so everybody wants to know, well, why are my pecans dropping off the tree? And part of the reason they're dropping is stress. You know, it's hot, dry. If you hadn't been watering your trees enough, they will drop pecans like this. Others can be insect damage. You know, if you, if you take a pecan and you cut it in half and the shell is not hard, uh, a stink bug stung that nut. And when a stink bug stings those nuts before the shell gets hard, they're prone to drop off the tree. So we have a lot of pecans dropping right now. We think it's okay. The other thing is we have research to suggest that 40% of the nuts that a pecan tree puts on will drop for whatever reason. So if you drop it, no problem, no problem. But most people when they make pecans and they have a lot on the tree, they can't ever pull one off. And so we're gonna talk about that here directly. Now other common question we get this time of the year is, my pecans are full of water. Notice how the water's running out there? Watch again, here you go. And so it's just pure water inside. And so people call up and say, hey, there's water in my pecans. Well, that's what it's supposed to be. You have to have water. These pecans have to fill up with water. That's what puts the kernel in, in the nut itself. And so water is a really, really key element. So when people call up and say, hey, we got water in our pecans, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, realize pecans go through stages of development. So we're in the water stage now, and then you have other varieties. Like that was, that variety right there was Choctaw. This variety right here is Sioux. And so when we cut Sioux, it's kind of a gel. It's not really liquid anymore. It's gone into the gel stage. And so that's another stage of development in the stage of the development of the nut itself. So there's one, we call that the gel stage. So you go water, gel, then you go dough. And here is a native pecan. Native pecans are certain varieties that mature really early. You see how it's in the dough stage? 
This is one we call the Gith. In Alsatian means the good. And so it's almost full. You see that little bit of air pocket right there? Those nuts continue to fill as long as the shell is white. So you have these different stages of development on nuts. Now, we also have some early varieties in Texas. Here's one called Kanza. And Kanza, it, well, it's an early ripening variety, and you see it's almost totally full, almost totally full. So you have different stages of development of these nuts, and so you need to manage them accordingly. So the next thing we want to talk about is this tree right here. This is a Wichita tree. And Wichita is famous for having large clusters of nuts. So here's one that has two, four, five nuts. Five nuts in a cluster. Here's another one with five nuts in a cluster. Tremendous load on this tree. Here's another one with four. And so one of the things we figured out over the years is there's a limit to what these trees can carry. They can only carry and mature so many nuts. And so the ideal situation this time of the year would be to thin some of these nuts off the tree. And so we would suggest that you come in here and just pull all but one, all but one. So how many out there that are growing pecans can pull off all the pecans on your tree? So here we're taking off some more. Here we're taking off some more. And so the bottom line is I would really encourage you rather than propping up the limbs with a stick this summer, go ahead and thin some of these pecans off. Take them off. You can cut them off. Uh, you can pull them off. I used to have a grower. When harvest started, he was pulling pecans. The guy was literally pulling the nuts off the tree and harvesting them. Now let's talk about a few late season issues that we see. On this particular nut right here, you see all the spots right there? That's scab. That's what scab disease looks like. Now scab was an issue early on in the season. Uh, we had a lot of rain, it's dried off now, so the scab is not that big a thing. Once the shell gets hard, scab doesn't hurt you anymore. But you know, if you were thinning these pecans, you would take off all these scab riddled ones and just leave the good ones. So you would pull those off. There's a couple of late season insect problems that we have to deal with. Those of you up in the more northern part of the state, uh, you have to deal with weevil. Weevil is a, a beetle that lays an egg inside of the nut. So it lays her egg inside of the nut and then that larva hatches out and that larva consumes the entire kernel. And so we don't have weevil in South Texas, but other areas that have weevil, uh, you have to spray for weevil. How can you tell what variety of pecan you have if you weren't the one who planted it? Good question. How do you know what variety of pecan you have? What you need to do is you need to save some pecans this fall. This fall, save about eight to 10 pecans, put them in a plastic bag once they're dry, take them to your county extension agent, and then they can send them to a specialist. And typically we can ID them from looking at the nut itself. And so we're happy to do that for you uh, if you so desire. So we talked about pecan weevil. The other problem that we have in South Texas, one of the other problems we have is a shuck worm. And shuck worm is a worm that tunnels in the shuck here, tunnels in the shuck. And so typically if you have black shuck, shucks, that's a shuck worm problem. And so you need to spray for that. Last insect pest that we typically have to deal with is, is stink bugs. And stink bugs, they pierce the, the nut and they feed on the nut itself and they cause the black spots on the kernel. And so if you've had stink bug issues in the past or you go out to your tree and you see stink bugs up in the tree, then you need to think about applying a, a spray for stink bugs. So I showed you how to thin this tree with, by hand and I would encourage you to do that. We're gonna show you how they do this commercially and take a quick moment to do that. Then it commercially, we're gonna shake the tree. Uh, we have a pecan shaker sitting here, and so we're gonna hook onto the tree, shake the tree, and we're gonna let the nuts fall out, and then we'll come back and talk about that. Another question. Where is best to buy pecan trees? Question is, where is it best to buy pecan trees? We have several nurseries in state that are a good place to buy, so I would, check with one of the local nurseries in your area and typically they will have farm fresh pecan trees that you can buy.
Uh, grasshoppers are defo defoliating our pecan trees. Any recommendations? Grasshoppers can be an issue. This year it's been fairly dry and so grasshoppers can defoliate them. The best thing to use on them is a bait. Seven mole is what it's called. It's a bait that you bake the perimeter. The mole stands for molasses and so the grasshoppers are attracted to that and they will feed on that and kill them. If it's young trees, you need to spray them with an insecticide, something like seven, and that should control them. All right, so we're gonna take a minute now. We're gonna fire up this shaker and show you how we thin these trees. And a lot of people can't do that. look at the ground. So if you look at the ground, it's covered with pecans and limbs and squirrels and birds and everything else. You want to look up in the tree. Look up in the tree. And so if you shake the tree and you don't get enough off, then you really hadn't done a good job. So thinning, we figured out thinning is a real, real important part of commercial pecan production. I would encourage you in your backyard, you have one or two trees, Think about pulling those pecans off because that really will help improve the quality of the remaining pecans on the tree. It also helps the tree come back with a crop the next year. You know, you overcrop them one year, then they don't come back with a crop. Pecans are nor notorious for alternate bearing. Big crop one year, nothing the next. So we say if you thin the trees, you have a more moderate crop each year and you have consistent production. Now, our experts that are helping answer the questions, they probably posted our insect guides. And if you go to that spray schedule, there's like eight to 10 to 12 sprays that you could make a year if you have pecan trees. And when you think about it, nobody has the ability to do that. The average homeowner, I mean, they just don't. You have big trees, you can't do that. So what I'm here to tell you, the most important thing for you to do from now until shuck split, when the nuts open up on the tree, is you need to water them. You need to water them. Pecan trees need two inches a week, so we're gonna turn the water on now. We're gonna turn the water on now. And what you need to do is you need to irrigate these trees at least once a week. You wanna water at the drip line of the tree, which is the edge of the canopy, is where you wanna the, want water these trees. And you want to try to apply at least two inches a week would be an ideal way to do that. You can use a sprinkler like this right here and what you want to do is move it around the tree. If you hadn't fertilized the tree, you may throw in a little bit of fertilizer. You know, this is a, this is a 24 inch trunk tree and so we may give it about five pounds of ammonium sulfate, sprinkle it in, water it in, and that will help those nuts fill out. So what I'm here to tell you then is the most important job going forward from here on out is that you water your pecan trees. Don't worry about all the insect problems. You know, you can spray, but we really pass time for a lot of those issues. If you have weevil, you may need to think about that. But what I'm here to tell you is the most important thing you need to do now is to water your trees so that you will be able to enjoy, you will be able to enjoy pecan kernels this fall this fall and so tune in in september in september late early october uh, we'll have a session where we harvest pecans we'll show you how, how to harvest them how to dry them and so the real key factor behind getting these quality kernels like this right here is this late season irrigation and so i would really encourage those of you that have a crop on your trees to water your trees late uh, 
realize also these pecans are good for you. It takes a lot to put the kernel inside. Realize that most of the kernel is oil. It's 70% olive oil. And so pecans are good to eat as well. We would encourage you to eat about 15 to 20 halves every day. 15 to 20 halves every day. Not only do they taste good, but they're also good for you. The big thing we have to shy away from though is, in Texas, we like to coat everything with sugar. Everything with sugar. And so, you need, you need to check with my friends at the Texas Pecan Growers. Uh, they have a recipe section. And so you can get many, many good recipes about different things you can make with pecans. Like I said, the best way to eat them, the healthiest way is eat them fresh. But if you're so inclined, you can make these chocolate pecan bars that are really, really good. So, with having said that, remember to water your trees late season. And be, be on the lookout for our next session sometime, probably in early October when we talk about harvesting pecans. So until then, have a good one and stay cool.